I'll start again. Um, yes, I'd like to offer you a very, very warm welcome to this, the third sitting of the Citizens' Assembly of Scotland. Uh, it is incredibly heartening to see so many familiar faces in the room again and to uh, start to see that uh, relationships are building again and uh, reacquainting is happening around the tables. Um, you may recall the last time we met, it was back in the last decade. Uh, so welcome to 2020. Um, we have been through a new year, a new decade, and also the um, general election, which we touched on uh, the last time we met. So I'm not going to take very much time just now. I, I'm just going to say thank you uh, for your commitment and your, uh, yeah, your, your real understanding of this process. I'm, I'm, I'm heartened by it. Uh, but I just wanted a couple of make a couple of housekeeping points before we start. Um, if you have any issues with your accommodation, please go to the front desk uh, of the uh, conference centre and they will deal with that. If you have any issues with the day-to-day uh, -day work that we're going to undertake over the next couple of days, the um, secretariat desk is available outside where it was last time. Uh, that will be open until after dinner and it will also be open early tomorrow morning. So if you have any issues, please do talk to the secretariat. I'd like to ask the secretariat to say hello again and to uh, make yourselves known in the room. Some familiar faces. And I'd also like to give a warm welcome to some of our stewarding uh, group members who are able to join us this weekend. Is anybody from the stewarding group here? Yeah, lovely, great. So you'll, you'll get to know uh, these folk across the weekend. And also the facilitation team again, who I think are quite obvious in your blue t-shirts. Yeah, okay. Um, we've also got one of our special guests uh, who's joining us this weekend, Chris McCorkendale, who I believe is with us for dinner as well. Oh. There you go, blinded by proximity. Lovely, Chris, thanks so much for joining us. Um, so we're, what we're going to do this evening, it's a bit of a, a learning dinner like we had the last time. We're going to have our starters and mains and then we'll pause for about 20 minutes when we'll be able to unpack the weekend a little bit, talk through the agenda and then you'll also hear from Chris uh, and John Sturrock, uh, one of our stewarding group members, who is going to be uh, working with us across the weekend so that we feel ready and refreshed for a hard working weekend. Now we are intending to close at about nine o'clock. I know that's slightly late for some folk, so um, please feel free to, to kind of leave and prepare uh, for tomorrow morning if you, if you want to get away from uh, slightly before nine o'clock. But until then, until I speak again, please enjoy your dinner, please enjoy catching up, and uh, we'll be back at about 20 past eight. Thanks very much. Um, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, coming back uh, to order. Um, I must apologise, I forgot to uh, remind you that my name is Kate Wimpress and I'm the convener of the Citizens' Assembly of Scotland. Um, I just uh, wanted to say I hope you enjoyed your uh, starter and main course and I'm just wondering if we could give the staff here a little bit of a round of applause for looking after us. Uh, so incredibly well. Um, so as you know, in the lead up to this weekend, the Secretariat have issued you with an agenda um, and a link to the background papers for the weekend. Uh, you may have had a chance to look at those, um, but if not, don't worry, uh, we'll, we'll be covering off all the information. And we thought it would be useful at this point just to kind of walk you through the plan for the weekend and um, what you'll be doing uh, and also to introduce uh, a, a couple of the people who will be working with us across the next two days. Um, and I'm going to briefly introduce a couple of new features um, to our proceedings, uh, which will include um, some short slots for members to uh, discuss amongst themselves, identify points of learning about the process, um, and also uh, we have a proposal to establish a members reference group who we may <coughs> be able to um, contact in between meetings. Now, I think you'll um, experience a bit of a gear shift this weekend. Um, we worked very hard last weekend, for sure. Um, but I think this weekend, again, you, you'll notice it kind of stepping up. And we're going to be getting into some of the um, really meaty issues that you highlighted as your um, areas of focus. So I'd like to ask you, again, to think carefully about the um, 
respectful dialogue that we have agreed we're going to engage in, um, and also to reflect on the conversational guidelines that we set uh, with each other at the very beginning of this process. Um, you know, as, as discussions get livelier and as we maybe move into room for uh, disagreement, it's the respectful dialogue that will see us through. And you've probably noticed there's, there's quite a bit more interest in the Assembly as well. Uh, now that the general election is over, we are, are live streaming again. And we'll have a number of observers and some uh, members of the media with us um, throughout sa sa Saturday and Sunday. Now, there's no requirement to speak to the media um, as we go along. Um, you know, so absolutely don't feel that, that, that you have to if you don't want to. But it is an interesting way to have your voice heard. So if it is something that would be of interest to you or you'd like to maybe try it out, please get in touch with one of the secretariat um, and they and uh, the PR agency who are working with us will be on hand to kind of support you through that. Um, so please don't, um, don't feel that you wouldn't because it's something you've never done before. Um, I think it's important to, to, to bring your voice to the fore. So I think also reflecting on that, I hope you've had a chance to have a look at the um, fantastic members' diaries that are on the websites. Thank you to everybody who contributed to those. Um, and also we've been uh, sharing some footage of members speaking on, on social media. Now I think that's a really um, clear way of sharing the work of the Assembly with the, with the wider um, population and society. Um, and I think I'd encourage all of you to, to step up. If you're interested in, in talking to the media, if you want to do some filming with us, or if you want to um, write a diary for the website, um, please do let us know and, and we'll support you through it. So also uh, kind of connected to that, this weekend we're going to have a, a discussion again on the broadcasting consents um, that you filled in in weekend one. You may feel slightly different about the broadcasting consent from weekend one to now as we've kind of matured as an assembly and as you've um, got to know each other and got to know more about the process. So there'll be an opportunity for you to think again about that and um, reflect on, on the decision you made back in weekend one. There's no need to change your mind about it, but you may just feel slightly differently now than you did then. So I'm going to turn to the agenda for this weekend. Um, Ian and Kelly are here um, and will help me kind of explain uh, what we're doing and why. Um, but, you know, I'm standing here at the front with a microphone, but, but if there's a burning question you have and you want to chip in at some point through this, please just go on ahead and um, just raise, raise your hand and, and we'll, we'll deal with that. So I think you will see, um, even a quick glance over the uh, agenda will show you that, that the business of this weekend is in, in two main parts. So we have the general election and um, the first part of our weekend is taking stock of priorities and the state of the country um, after that general election, and particularly to reflect on the constitutional questions, where we are and how we might move forwards. And we're doing this in three sections. Um, first of all, we've got a discussion with lead academics to discuss where we are. Um, and then you'll have seen we've got the poli uh, politicians panel. And then we're going to have quite a, a good period of time at the table discussions to consider what we've heard from both the academics and the politicians um, and to look at where the points of agreement and disagreement are and where we might, how we might move forwards. Um, and as I said before, we've been very uh, lucky to be joined by some of the, the kind of leading experts in the, in the constitutional world uh, who are going to assist by informing us and responding to questions that you may have. And I'd like now to ask up uh, Chris McCorkendale, who um, I now recognise is sitting just to my left, um, to, to give us a few words uh, about the session tomorrow and about the, the kind of interaction. Uh, and he'll also be working with Alan Rennick, who you've met before, and Alan is just there straight in front of me. But yeah, Chris, if you'd share a few words with us, that'd be great. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks, Kate. As Kate said, my name's Chris McCortendale. I'm a senior lecturer in public law at Strathclyde University, the law school at Strathclyde University. For those of you who don't know what that means, for our purposes, what that means is that I am an academic engaged in the study of the Constitution. So the relationships between state institutions, the relationships between 
the state and the citizens, where power comes from, who it's held by, how that power can be held to account, questions like that and questions of the sort which you're all going to be engaged with over the next few days. Um, what I want to start by saying is that it's an enormous privilege to be here um, for two reasons, or more than two reasons, but for two that I'll say at the minute. The first one is you know, when the First Minister announced the uh, intention to establish a, a citizens' assembly, she made clear that she intended for the government to take extremely seriously the recommendations and the guidance that you offer. And so for you having the opportunity to gather in these, me in, in these meetings and in these sessions and to provide some of that guidance, um, I think is an extremely important, extremely valuable thing. It's an, a unique thing in the context of Scotland. And so it's a privilege not only for you but to, to be doing it, but for me to, to help you in that and, 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 and to observe you doing that, which is a constitutional nerd, I must admit, I'm quite looking forward to. The second reason why it's a privilege is because of whose shoes I'm stepping into. Nicola McEwen, who you will have met in, certainly in session one, I'm not sure if she was here over the second weekend, but certainly you'd have met her in session one, is an incredible academic. Unfortunately, um, she couldn't be here this weekend and asked me to step in, and I just hope I can do some justice to, to um, build on the work that Nicola's already done with you. So what I'll be looking to do over the next uh, couple of days is probably threefold. One is, as Kate said, we've had a general election, so to give you a sense of how the constitutional picture has moved on since <coughs> Nicola first spoke to you about it a way back at the first session, what have been the constitutional implications of the result of the, the general election in, in December. In some ways, the general election has clarified and crystallised some of these constitutional questions. The Conservative government now has a majority in Parliament. That means it will be much easier for the government to get through the uh, agreement that it's reached with the European Union to facilitate our exit from the European Union. So that crystallises, at least in part, what the Brexit process might look like or might begin to look like. And we'll, we'll try and unpack some of that tomorrow. Um, the second thing, though, is that there is a great deal of uncertainty about what Scotland's place within that picture might look like. We've seen that in the aftermath of the general election, the SNP, the Scottish Government, has put the question of independence back onto the agenda. We've seen that Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, has responded by saying, no, thank you very much. We'll keep it off the agenda for the time being. And so we'll try to unpick some of the, the, the ramifications of that. Is independence truly back on the agenda? What constitutionally has to happen for that to have traction? What's the significance of the Prime Minister refusing to um, grant the request for a, for a second independence referendum? And what other constitutional options might be available? So we'll try to, to cover that, which seems like a lot for a 15 minute slot, but I'll do my best. The second thing I want to do over the weekend is to talk to you about the theme of the weekend, which is sustainability. So we, Alan and myself, will be listening intently to the deliberations that you have on Saturday and Sunday trying to work out how you choose to interpret what it means to build a sustainable Scotland. And it will be our task to then quickly to make sense of that and try to offer some constitutional guidance along the way that can offer you some insight as to, well, if we want to do this, where do the powers lie? Are these exercised at European level, at domestic level, at devolved level, at local level? Can these things best be achieved by governments, by legislatures, by citizens themselves? <coughs> Um, and so, so that you have some sense of how these aspirations might be realised. And then the third thing is, quite apart from standing talking to you from a podium like this, is just to go around the room as your discussions unfold on Saturday and Sunday, table to table, room by room, however it's organised, and just to help you along the way with questions that you might have as they arise over the course of, of your discussions. So that's what I intend to help you to do, but the important thing is really the deliberations that you have. Um, thanks very much. I hope it's going to be a productive weekend.
Um, thank you, Chris. That's absolutely a uh, fantastic kind of overview. And I hope that the cumulative learning that we've all been taking part in across the first two weekends has kind of whetted your appetite for, for those discussions um, tomorrow. Now, after that session, we'll move into the um, politicians panel. Um, and John Sturrock, who you've met before and who is part of our <laughs> stewarding group, is going to facilitate that conversation. Um, so. John, you'll know, you'll know John's face. Um, hopefully you'll know John's face even better after tomorrow. Um, so I'd like to ask John to come up and say a few words about how he's going to work with the politicians tomorrow. Thank you very much indeed, Kate. I'm not so sure actually that you will know who I am because there are so many of us and we come and go and we sit in the back and we watch you and maybe you see us from time to time. So I am John Sturrock and I just want to say, almost just to reinforce what Chris has said, what a real privilege it is to be here and to be a part of this remarkable journey. And it is a remarkable journey for all of us. And although some of us may appear to have some sort of status or <coughs> background or understanding, it's a real interesting journey for us as well. I'm, I'm just delighted to share that journey with you all. And, and one of the reasons for standing up this evening and talking a little bit about what we're going to do tomorrow with the politicians is that I want to recognize that um, I'm a part of that journey. I'm going to be facilitating the conversation tomorrow. And in a sense, I will be your voice in that conversation tomorrow because I get to ask questions. You will too, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But I will have the opportunity to guide the politicians in the way in which they, they say things and what they say and how they say it, I hope. So I wanted to say just a little bit about that. We've got a relatively short time tomorrow, so as ever we're constrained. There'll be so much more we could talk about that we would like to talk about, but we'll make the best of the opportunity that presents itself. And this is a chance just to set the scene for what's going to happen tomorrow. I suppose, as Chris has hinted at, the general election changes everything, doesn't it? Uh, I happened to be in the Houses of Parliament just over a day ago, yesterday afternoon, late, late afternoon, early evening, and I was wandering about, and I passed <coughs> Jeremy Corbyn, and I, just, just in passing Jeremy Corbyn, I thought how his world must have changed and how the world has changed for so many politicians in these last few weeks. And that, I suppose, might be one of the, the themes. So tomorrow we're going to have four of the five parties, we hope, uh, represented here tomorrow. And it's an opportunity to get a sense of how they see things. And I very much hope, and this is a key point for me and I hope for you tomorrow, that we won't simply have a restatement of their party political positions because while that one is interested in that, that's not really, I think, what the work of this assembly is about. So I'm very keen that somehow or other we get under the surface and we find a little bit more about who they really are and what they really think about important topics such as those that you're discussing. But my, my, my interest in all of this is how we do it. Uh, and maybe that leads me to just a few remarks about my own journey. I am, by profession, a lawyer. I am what's called a QC. So I spent a, a part of my professional career in the courts in Scotland, and, and that was all about argument, adversarialism, I'm right, you're wrong, you're wrong, I'm right, black and white, uh, a bit of like yes, no, leave, remain, very binary, and actually quite simplistic in its approach. I have to say, in hindsight, I found that deeply unsatisfactory and unsatisfying, but it's the way in which so much of what we do in life is done. I, I had the real opportunity, the privilege, to break away from that nearly 20 years ago and become what's called a mediator. So I now work in a world which recognises complexity, uncertainty, ambiguity, and the fact that people have real differences between them and, and that these differences often become really emotional and, 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 and hard and difficult to resolve. And my job is to help people to try to work out what the common ground is, where their interests maybe intersect, if you like, and to find solutions to really difficult problems. And it's an amazing job, actually, and, and a real privilege to do it. And that, that's my day job. So I, I, I'm, I help people to find <coughs> solutions where a, there appear to be no solutions in really difficult circumstances, not unlike the tasks that you are being presented with in the Citizens' Assembly. And, and for me, it led me to an interest a few years ago in how this all applies in politics. And so back in 2014, don't worry, that's probably the score coming in from Ibrox, but we'll not worry about that. <laughs> if there's a big cheer, we'll know that somebody has scored. It could be Stran Rar, but I think it's unlikely, no. Um, yeah, so I, I became really interested in, in 
whether we could begin to move away from this binary adversarial yabu sucks approach to politics. So at the time of the independence referendum, I was part of what was called Collaborative Scotland, something we set up. And we held events, and you know, our first event, event was, what kind of Scotland do we want to see? It was so similar to what the Citizens' Assembly is now doing so well. And we tried to get away from yes, no, right, wrong, in, out, and move to something much more constructive. And we had something called the commitment to respectful dialogue. And we've heard Kate refer to respectful dialogue again this evening. And our idea was to try to help people to have discussions about things that really matter, to listen, to ask questions, to recognize different points of view, all the essential aspects and attributes of the work that you are doing here. So I'm interested to see what happens tomorrow and to what extent we can help the politicians and be helped by the politicians to move on from this kind of binary adversarial approach to politics which is so familiar to us. So tomorrow we're going to ask the politics, politicians to say a little bit about who they are and why they're in politics. We're then going to ask them to say a little bit more about how they see things in Scotland now, uh, what the priorities might be, what the challenges might be, particularly given the constitutional situation, but not to get into an argument about independence or union to see if we can find where the areas of common ground might be, to ask how they might work together, even if they have very profound differences, and what that might mean for the long term and, and the people of Scotland in the long term. So that's the plan, uh, and we'll see how it works out. We'll see how willing they are to engage in that way. I will ask some questions, because that's the role I've been given, but I'm also going to encourage you to ask some questions. Now, our time will be tight. So what I'll do at a certain point is I'll give you the opportunity to have a chat with maybe your neighbour uh, and just think to yourself, what would I like to ask these people? Not, not a, an assertion or a political position, but what <coughs> facts do I not understand? What clarification do I want? There'll be very limited time, but we'll do our best. And in fact, what I would say to you this evening is if you, if you have something in mind that you think you'd like to ask one of these Scottish politicians, just tap me in the shoulder and, and let me know yeah. and, I'll, and I'll do my best. And it will be just a question of doing my best to get as much of this into the short time scale as we can. As ever there'll not be enough time, it will be frustrating, but we'll see where we can get to. So that's it, I think, and we'll finish off with a wrap up, and I'm going to ask them at the end what they think you, as, a, as the Citizens' Assembly, can contribute to the future of Scotland, to decision making, to policy making, to politics, and how might we do politics differently. So that's the agenda, that's the approach, we'll see how it works. It's a collaborative conversation for us all, and you'll have the chance, as Kate says, after that, to go away and think about it at your tables. So thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, thank you very much, John. Um, and I, I think, yeah, framing it as a, a, an opportunity for us to help the politicians, I think that's a, a really nice way to put it, and they can help us in our, in our discussions um, as we go forwards. So that's the morning, a very busy morning, as you can uh, see. Um, and uh, but we'll have a, a chance to to break for lunch and and kind of reflect further on uh, the discussions that have been held in the room. And then we'll come back in, and it'll we'll go into our second uh, item of the weekend, um, and that's the discussion on sustainability. Now you'll recognise that this is one of the key priority statements that you agreed at the last weekend. Um, now this, I have to say uh, the Secretariat have worked incredibly hard over the last few weeks to kind of sift through all the statements um, and to find the best way uh, that reflects your work um, that enables us to take this statement um, forward and take the discussions forwards. And I'll, I'll explain a little bit more tomorrow about how we did that. Um, but we decided that this statement hit um, very many of the buttons that were found within the initial 350 plus statements about the kind of Scotland um, that you seek uh, that you sought to build um, whenever you, that you prepared as individuals. So we felt it, it was really strong in, in encapsulating quite a number of the individual um, aspirations for the country. And then it also reflect, reflected quite clearly um, what you discussed and how you narrowed it down. And I think it's fair to say that it, it uh, it builds in issues around fairness, about tackling inequalities, about jobs, prosperity, and an economy that works for us all, um, and also ensuring strong public services and kind of improving outcomes for all, which seemed to be one of the clear themes um, that was coming through. And, and 
also thinking about how to govern the country well um, and responsible stewardship and thinking ahead, ahead for our country and the wider world. And I think it also, if we can cast our mind back uh, the two weekends ago, uh, October, when we, we first met each other, um, if you recall the word cloud that we worked on at the very beginning, before we had any deliberation, before we had any cumulative learning, um, sustainability was really clear uh, and, and central to that word cloud. So I hope you can um, see how that kind of golden thread has um, been woven through all your work. Now, we'll have a chance to reflect on the range of statements prepared um, last weekend, later on during the Assembly, but we'll spend most of this weekend exploring those different threads about sustainability. Um, and I'm very excited about this session because it, it, it's that balance of um, environment, economy and social uh, that I think will really allow us to uh, enliven our, our discussions and we're going to be joined by three experts, Catherine Trebek, uh, Andy Kerr and Sandy Begbie. Um, and so they're thoughtful and informed commentators um, and I'm sure we'll learn a lot through um, that session with them. Uh, enabling us to kind of absorb that and go on and prepare outputs that will be uh, incredibly special and provide a starting point for the important legacy of the assembly which is the report and the recommendations as we move forwards <coughs> so i recognize that i'm the only thing standing here before you and your pudding so i shall, shall crack on with a few other items um, on one very practical point, we had a few people um, commenting on it being difficult to hear each other and see each other in the in the room and at the tables in, in the last weekend. And we're going to experiment a little this uh, weekend by moving from uh, that main room into the auditorium and then into breakout rooms. So I hope that that will enable um, everybody to get clear line of sight and also hear everything. Um, and also give you a little bit of a chance to kind of stretch your legs and, and kind of uh, get some fresh air in between the sessions. If there are difficulties with that, again, tell us and we'll, we'll try and work out a, a system um, to uh, lessen any difficulties. Um, and we're also going to knit in a bit more time for members to discuss processes and raise any issues that you feel need to be decided by the Assembly as a whole. Now, I'll not go into detail about that just now, I'll explain it properly, um, but in the meantime, just to say that we did a huge amount of work in the last weekend preparing the statements, but it's clear that we didn't have quite as much time as we would have liked to stand back and kind of reflect on what we achieved. Um, so it was all about process, process, pro process, and we didn't quite um, have enough time to reflect on what we've done. Um, and to maybe, you know, nuance some, some items and, and pick out certain things that we want to discuss. Um, so there will be an opportunity within the uh, main agenda to um, look at things and discuss it as an assembly. So if there's anything that you have uh, in your minds at the moment that you think that we that the whole assembly should um, talk through, please get in touch with Ian or Lisa or Catherine or Kelly or myself and, and let me know. Um, and also, kind of related to that, I've got a bit of a favour to ask you now. Um, we want to establish a small reference group uh, of around about six volunteers who um, can act as a sounding board as we as we move forwards in the planning of future weekends. Um, again, I'll explain much more about that tomorrow and the kind of process we're going to go through. But if you feel that you'd like to be considered for that um, kind of voluntary <coughs> role uh, in between meetings, um, if you could again just have a word with either Ian or Catherine or Lisa and myself. So that's it really, that's uh, wrapping up most of the kind of formal uh, information for this evening. I hope that if you uh, get a chance to look at the agenda and you've listened to our, our two speakers this evening that you're excited and kind of enlivened for the debate and discussion tomorrow. Um, unless there's any more questions, if there's any questions from the floor? No? I think everybody's thinking when's pudding coming out and uh, uh, can I have a coffee? But uh, I'm just gonna, for practicalities, I'm gonna hand over to Kelly, um, but I think we are going to then move on with pudding. So thank you from me, I will see you in the morning and uh, I'm so delighted to see you back in the room again. Hello again, everyone. Oh, that was a bit loud, sorry. 
Um, so I'm just here to tell you a few practicalities. Um, first of all, we are about to have desserts and coffees, but you are very welcome to leave at any point, to go to bed, to get fresh for tomorrow. Um, so please do that if you do need to do so. We will be registering again tomorrow from 8.30 a.m. So please go to the registration desk for 8.30 a.m. And we'll be kicking off at 9 a.m. sharp in the main room. And breakfast is going to be from 7.30 a.m. And that's going to be in the Waterhouse. Just one little request. Um, if any of you have not yet registered today, please can you make sure that you pop by the registration desk and pick up your pack and your badge. But that's it. Um, please enjoy your evening. We look forward to seeing you back at 8.30 sharp for registration and 9 o'clock sharp to get going. See you then.